the fact that Kawasaki gave me this nice sweatshirt, I don't want you to think I can be influenced by that. But you know, this shirt, it just made the bike seem that much better. Versus 300X I'm driving around. We're out here in Utah. Little 300cc parallel twin. ABS front and back. I know you guys like that kind of stuff. Very uh, adventure styled. With Jeff Herzog, uh, PR guy for Kawasaki and ex AMA racer, and we've been riding these Versus 300s around Utah. Yep. So tell me a little something about this bike. Uh, it's the latest addition to the Versus family. It's the Versus X 300, and kind of the unique unique thing about the Versus X 300 is it has improved capability for uh, off road riding. I took it a. Uh, I took it down some dirt roads, it did pretty good. Yeah, it's the the motto behind this bike is any road, any time. It's, it's, a, it's a nice little piece, very capable. What size are these wheels? Uh, it's a 19 inch up front and a 17 inch in the rear. It, is this a like a Ninja engine converted or retuned or something? Uh, yeah, it's it's the same basic power plant that was in the Ninja 300, so it's, it's tried and true. Plenty of horsepower, plenty of torque. Now this one, <laughs> is not the one you're going to get. This has some extra parts on it. What 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 kind of, these are Kawasaki factory parts? Yeah, the Kawasaki Genuine Accessories. It's the protection uh, bar and the uh, lighting kit. And it also has the hand guards on it. And this one has the taller seat on it. I tried the stock seat and I liked it. And this one, because I have like no legs, this one actually was a little higher. And the comfort, I actually like the way it Put me on the bike more, you know. Yeah, it kind of kind of yeah. almost like lowering the handlebars, you yeah. know. Yep. But when I come to a stop, I, I couldn't quite reach, so I went back with the stock seat. What did we do? 250 miles on? Uh, it was 350 between the 350? two days. Yeah. Did we ever go below 7,000 RPM? Uh, maybe at the gas station. I got 102 out of it. Yeah. <laughs> What'd you get? Oh, we're on video. Kawasaki makes a, a lot of accessory luggage for this bike. They make a top box, they make a side boxes, they make crash bars, hand guards. Uh, they have an optional high seat, which I tried. It's supposed to be an inch higher. It's the exact same seat. It looks the same. It's just one inch higher. I, I can reach the ground okay in the stock bike. I got like a 29 inch in seat. There's a joke there. Nice, quiet exhaust note. The way I like them. Up on the dash here, you've got your uh, speedometer, you've got your clock, your neutral. It's real easy to get into neutral. Uh, you've got trip one, two, and odometer. Fuel, water temperature, uh, miles per gallon momentary shot of what you're doing and overall average and these buttons here change the screens with these things there's a, uh, a little hoodoo that lights up when you're getting uh, real good mileage I guess it's somehow tied into engine vacuum and you got all the regular stuff over here horn blinkers all that stuff works normal over here starter engine kill this bike has a super light clutch I've never felt a clutch. It feels like it's not even hooked up to anything. And uh, it took me a little bit getting used to it because it's got a pretty quick engagement point, but I'm okay with it now. Like if you have an injured hand or something, this thing, you can you can squeeze it literally with your pinky. The headlight looks like a H4, but I can't really tell. Uh, it's got an interesting little gobo on the front of it that redirects the light. ABS front and back, Nissan calipers. 
a uh, little pedal disc. Real nice header system under there. It really looks cool. Uh, this bike, when you look in the under where the radiator is, you don't see a fan on either side. Uh, the fan is in the middle, and there's this plastic ducting that ducts. When the fan kicks on, it blows it down, like toward the headers. And the theory being, it keeps the heat away from you and the bike. It's got two dual dual butterfly fuel injection intake track. I'll put up pictures, but yeah, it's got two... Uh, like a larger butterfly and a smaller one, I guess that smooths out the transitions. Chain drive, like, you know, since a uh, thousand years ago, already has all the brackets for the optional kickstand. I don't know why they don't just put it on, but you can buy an optional center stand. There's the thing for the spring, and there's where the pivot bolts go. It's pretty neat. Another ABS back brake works great. I don't mind ABS anymore. I mean, I'd like to be able to turn it off, but I don't see where I can turn it off anywhere. The suspension works really good off-road. I mean, it's not a dirt bike, but uh, we did some rough roads and hit a few bumps. It doesn't bottom out. It doesn't top out. That's, topping out is almost more annoying than bottoming out. I don't mind if it bottoms out. Really, if you're off-road riding and you're not bottoming out two or three times a day, you're wasting suspension. You, I'd go in Baja or anything in this thing. It's, it's light enough and it's got, you got to rev it, but it's got enough power if you get the RPMs up. I like a small bike. If you're the kind of guy that has a V-twin, you're probably not going to like the RPMs on the highway because you're running seven to 12,000. The twin sounds like it's revving more than your average quarter liter single. The difference is where the single runs out about 9,000 RPM, this thing has 3,000 more RPM to go. I got 102 out of it, but Kawasaki speedometers aren't that great, so who knows how fast it was going. But it was moving along fast enough. The weight's a little heavy, 386 pounds, but it hides it well, and it does real good off-road. I mean, we were going down some dirt, and I climbed some hills and did some scrambling. It was fine. Uh, and almost anything beats pedaling a bicycle. They have two colors, green and... Uh, Kind of a gray, which I had the gray bike. They they like gave us each bike with a with a logo on it and stuff like that. But uh, the gray bike I didn't like so much. It, in fact, I really don't like this adventure styling that much. But the bike is so good, you, you almost put up with the styling. But I seem to be alone in that. Everybody else likes this adventure look. I still like a bike that looks like something Fonzie would ride, you know. The first time you go off-road with ABS and you hit the rear brake like you want to skid and pivot or something like that, the thing just keeps rolling along. So I don't really like that and there's no off switch on the ABS. But the front really saves it because it, it's calibrated right. Anyway, it stops the bike in the dirt okay. But they do make a model, it'll be $300 cheaper with no ABS. If you're going to be doing a lot of trail riding, don't get the ABS. The engine, it doesn't have a ton of torque, but you know, it's a 300cc twin, but it it makes up for what it lacks in torque with tons of RPM. I mean, this thing is sweet. You'll be leaving the parking lot turning 12,000 RPM. It, it sounds like you're going down the back stretch of Daytona and you're doing about 45 miles an hour. I'm trying to say the bike is a nice bike. If you like a small displacement adventure tour, which it's just a motorcycle with, you know, bodywork that looks like the end of the world. It's a pretty good, it's a pretty good bike. I, I'd say it's, uh, it's worth taking a look at. All right, we'll see you next time.